First Timothy chapter 5, I'm going to start by um, laying some groundwork here, just with the word honor. I've covered this many times before, but we're going to prove in the context, even of 1 Timothy chapter 5, that the word honor is being used not as just respect, but as taking care of financially, caring for, providing for, giving provision for. That's what the word honor means here. And so we're going to start at the beginning of the chapter here. Verse number three says, honor widows that are widows indeed. And then it's going to go on to define who is a widow indeed. So who fits into this, this category of being a widow indeed? You know, if anyone have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to require their parents, for that is good and acceptable. Now she is a widow indeed, and desolate trusteth in God, and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. So a widow indeed is someone who's got their heart right with serving the Lord. Right? We see that. Jump down to verse number 8. It says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So um, as the Bible's going into describing a widow and, and uh, that the widow should be honored, it brings up someone not providing for his own being worse than an infidel. So we see there the, the reference to provision, to providing for. It's just someone who has a family, they have a relative, they have maybe a grandma is not working, she's widowed, and if you're not providing for her, then, you know, your, your mom or whatever, your parents, especially, the Bible says that you're supposed to honor your father and your mother. And, um, and again, there's, that's a whole nother, we could go down that road as well. When Jesus was rebuking the Pharisees and, they, and their Jewish tradition was, they called it korban or a gift by whatsoever their parents are profited by them, saying, oh, if, you're gonna, if I'm going to take care of you, you just consider that a gift. Like, I'm doing something nice for you, whereas the Bible commands it and says, no, you need to honor your father and your mother. You need to take care of them. It's your duty and your responsibility to take care of your parents. And it's the same thing here. It uses that word honor as the word to, to show that you need to provide for them, which is why in verse 8 it, it, it Transitions to use the word provide, but if any provide not for his own house, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Um, and then it goes on, continues about, let the widow not be taken in a number under three score years old. And it goes on, still continuing about the widows. And then in verse 16, the Bible reads, if any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged that it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Again, what is this talking about relieve? This isn't talking about respecting anybody. This isn't talking about just speaking to someone with respect. This is talking about relieving their burdens, right? Relieving their stress, relieving their, their financial responsibilities to survive, that you're going to help them. Uh, and it says, let not the church be charged, right? Because you're not going to charge the church with that work of taking care of the widows, when they have family members that should be doing that very thing. Verse 17, and now it's going to switch from the widows to the elders. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. So, when it's talking about elders here, I believe it's the same thing, the, the same way it's being used in 1 Peter chapter 5 when it was talking about elders. This is the same position within the church of a bishop or a pastor, which is also known as an elder. Because one of the qualifications for being an elder or a pastor is that you need to be able to rule the house of God. That's why you have to have your, your family or children in subjection because you're going to be ruling the house of God. And it says here that the elders that rule well should be counted worthy of double honor. So honor is being taken care of. Honor is being provided for, right? Your needs are met. Well, the, the elder that rules well, according to Scripture, and this is going to be the closest thing we have to base our, our you know, teaching off of, of what should a salary be. If you're thinking about paying a you know, man of God to be a pastor of a church, well... If someone is ruling well, they're doing a good job, they're working, they're especially they who labor in the word and doctrine, 
They're, they're really focused. They're doing a lot of effort and work on the Word of God, on getting solid doctrine, on teaching, on preaching, on doing this stuff. Someone who's doing that really well, that says they should be worthy of double honor. So the honor, you think, what single honor would be enough to provide like the widows are getting honored by being, having their needs met? Well, double honor is twice that, right? So it's not just your physical needs being met. You're getting more on top of that, twice as much more. 